Loud and Quiet presents Midnight Chats. Good evening, everybody. It is midnight on January the 11th, 2018. I'm not sure if this is going to pick up on my mic or not, but my neighbours downstairs have just come home and they are laughing hysterically, which is the norm, actually. They tend to come home around midnight, laugh their heads off for about five minutes, and then it's dead silent. And that's the only time we ever hear of them. I don't know what they're doing for the rest of the time. I don't know if they're just working up to this one big joke that comes at midnight and then they laugh at it for five minutes and then they're gone. I don't know. They're nice people, so I don't mind. And as neighbours go, I mean, that's not too bad, is it? But welcome to the first episode of Midnight Chats for a new year. We're currently 11 days in. I hope it's going well for you. I feel it's going okay for me. Um, yeah, I'm, there's no huge complaints there. But let me tell you about tonight's guest on the podcast. Craig David is someone who you may well think is kind of an unexpected one for us to feature. But the truth is that the music of Craig David is something that's very dear to me and to most people who are in their mid-30s now who grew up around that first wave of UK garage. I was going to clubs for the first time around 99, 2000, and UK garage was the sound of my town. Southend-on-Sea went really big on it, and a lot of that was thanks to Craig David and the Artful Dodger and Rewind, released in 99. The following year, when Craig released Born to Do It, his debut album, that was game over. Like, it was the only thing that was played in South End, at least. Craig David was everywhere when I was 17. You couldn't escape the guy, and you either embraced it and had the best time, or, well, you, there wasn't really an or. That was it. You just had to stay in otherwise. So Craig David's music is very nostalgic for me. This conversation is essentially two guys in their mid-30s reminiscing about the olden days. Um, Craig does also have a new album coming out this month called The Time Is Now. We hardly get onto that. In fact, I don't think we get onto it at all. Instead, we spent our time together talking about the streets. We talk about him moving to Miami and essentially his return via his TS5 show, which started out in his apartment in Miami and went all the way to the pyramid stage of Glastonbury last year. Thanks very much to Craig for coming on the podcast. He really was as nice as he sounds on this. And um, thanks to you for listening and downloading this episode of Midnight Chats. We're now back on it. So there will be a new episode every other Thursday for the rest of the year. We're going to try and fit in some extra ones in between as well. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. And before I leave you with Craig David, let's just see... I can get this on the mic of them having a better time than me. Could you hear that? No? I don't know. Just realised I've turned into the creepy guy who's recording people downstairs. So um, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> So trainers, we were talking about trainers. Yes, you're a tra so you're a trainer guy. Are you is that your thing? Like you buy you buy a lot of trainers. Um, I kind of tend to sort of when I like a certain style, I kind of then sort of buy into a lot of that style. So for the moment, it's like the Adidas, NMDs. Mm. Um, back in the day, it would have been like the Reebok Classics. Yeah, I've but just bought some new Reebok Classics. Have you? Yeah, yeah, because they've kind of come back full in circle a big way here. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't and, um, it feel like. There's a lot of that sort of resurgence of certain yeah, brands. I'm seeing like sure. Diodora, I'm seeing Alessi, and yeah, yeah, Fila. Yeah. It's all come full circle. 
and or just saw champion i saw like the champion one doing like a a collaboration with like a very cool brand like off white or something like that mm. kind of like i was thinking champion yeah wow people how t times have changed <laughs> it's it's amazing yeah so it's yeah so at the moment the nnds are getting a lot of love cool how many trainers have you got do um you know? do you know what it's i'm sure i'm, I'm definitely over a hundred trainers sort of scattered about all over the place. But I think that the reason why I got so like, turned into a bit of a trainer fanatic is because my first real pair of trainers was Nike Air Hirachis, the originals, which I wish I could have kept original okay. in the back, box right now. Back I know they're well. back, yeah, yeah. you could have the original yeah. boxed now and, oh man. Um, but I saved up all my pocket money, about like 70 quid and it was like, that was 70 pound where I'd like took time to get 70 pound going into the store, put them on. It was a whole moment, like putting them on, hoping no one christened them when I walked out of the store. And I used to scrub them with some this brush I had and the whitener and all the stuff I used to do. So I think once I was able to go out and buy a couple of trainers, I was like fulfilling that the kid in me. He was like, what, you can buy trainers now? Yes, we are gonna go buy, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so that's me. We had Mike Skinner on this podcast oh, last wicked. year. And we didn't talk about this on the podcast, but I right. know for a fact that when the streets were yeah. at their peak, he had this deal with Reebok, with Reebok Classics. Did he? And they would send him a new, a brand new pair of Reebok Classics every day. No. It would arrive at his house, a brand new pair no, of Reebok Classics. No, really, every, every, every single day? Every single day, yeah. What a G. That's kind of too much, right? I mean, every day is like, yeah. I mean, that that's a blessing in disguise you're getting them every single day so he'd like so that throw and the band like when he was on tour the band yeah they had reebok on their tour bus and stuff no and um the band did he have the same was it the same cut like here's a white pair here's a white pair because i mean every day i mean that's yeah, gonna be i like, think so okay i mean i mean i'm guessing like he could have chosen like Do whatever you, what whatever the workout through, yeah, pluses yeah. or whatever yeah, yeah of course but he would um all the band had to wear them mm-hmm and because they had so many, they would throw them into like the audience. They would take pairs. No, yeah, they were them, them guys. Them the so they were almost like the crowd was just like, this is like heaven. Yeah. We're getting Reebok classics. Reebok pumps, man. They've come back. Yeah, the have as well. they? Yeah, I've seen the Reebok pumps coming through and they were like legit. Like you had Reebok they pumps were, back in the day. Ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the streets, man. I mean, my skin is wicked, man. Like yeah. they, we, we were talking, I was talking to Dan from Bastille recently and we were just talking and we just came into the streets and then we took, we both said at the same time about Blinded by the Lights. Oh, that's the one as well. Oh, that's I mean, the original pirate material and uh, tunes, but that tune puts you into a place. Yeah. And just the, the video that accompanied it was just right and lyrically just, you know, almost, I mean, they, they were they were big, but it's almost way ahead of their time because mm. there's no one that for me has come and filled those shoes. Yeah, I feel yeah. Mike Skinner, if he dropped a record now, which I'd like to think they, the streets will do something again. Yeah. Now, I think it would be huge. Yeah, that song in particular, that bass sound, it encapsulates what it's like to be in a club. Yeah, it's like more than anything. You just like it's proper rave, but it was slowed. It was slowed down. It wasn't yeah. like a full on right there's a way he did it yeah I, I agree with you man. yeah yeah well he's just announced some shows some nice. street shows so they sold out in like three seconds you know right but um he's doing kind of small venue i think next year's going to be the I, he did he's he announced a tour yeah for here of like five dates or something they sold out in like a heartbeat what a guy. and i think like i think that's the start of things i think next I, year i agree gonna with you man everywhere. He, he came um we did a ts5 one of my TS5 shows, part of my pool party that I was doing in, in Ibiza, which we're gonna do another 12 weeks next year. So mm. if you wanna come through. Yeah, I saw party, that was just announced, right? Yeah, yeah. so if you wanna come, genuinely, it's like so much fun. Cool. But Mike Skinner performed um, at that on the closing party. What, oh, the tunes, and I, I- Was this his Was this his Tonga party? Or was yeah, this, sorry, yeah, it was Tonga party. Okay, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then the tunage that he was playing, and I was just like, part of me, I just, just been a fan of his music, just thinking, you know what, you've got to get on the mic again, man. There, there, there's like, you've got this gift. It's like this poetry, emotion, man, the way. So if they're doing the streets kind of shows again, I'd like to think there's just a, they'll tip him. Enough. I think there's something in there. I hope he's from this podcast, just to be like, if you're listening, Mike, <laughs> please get on the mic. I know you may be in a different stage, even if it's just two, three tunes. Let people know that that you, 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 you've still got that because like that skill set, ridiculous yeah he's also put out some things under this new name called the darker the shadow the brighter the light right you should check that out okay it's, it's, on, it's, it's on spotify and, Apple oh, and, Music and, 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 stuff. Is he, and he's on the mic 
well then there's a few answered, tunes up there answered, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. thanks man I, yeah, I, I didn't yeah. know did that and he's got a podcast with Murky I'm guessing you met Murky today yeah yeah, yeah I did yeah. Yeah. so we those did. two do a, uh, a, a mad podcast called Peak right. Times and you kind of need an urban dictionary to like to navigate do, through, through it. it yeah yeah it's like okay. it's a whole different language but it's really good I'll fun. check for that too yeah, see this is what I'm saying like this is what I'm learning to like new things to hear about his podcast about him dropping like the street shows are they already done the street shows or they no they're in like April time okay yeah. cool I have to yeah, 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 speak yeah. to cool. someone who knows someone yeah so we're here at Sony is this can you remember the would you have come into so Sony way back in the day or because I know um, were you down the, you were down the street at Atlantic right yeah so I did well first I was at Wildstar mm. um, which was half uh, owned by Telstar who did records who used to do all the compilations and by Capital mm. Radio, so it's the first kind of like collaboration between the two, and then the then I, then I was signed to it went through Atlantic, but in America, so that was that was that right, part. Okay, right. Then I was with Universal for a second, then now with obviously with with so with Insanity and Sony, sure. but I remember walking into the Sony building like, but it wasn't this one. It was when they were in a different place, and it's funny because that was when my my little not mixtape but mix my CD that had Walking Away on it. I hadn't had it didn't have film in or seven days it had rendezvous i think on there too okay and a cover of human um by human league okay is this bit this is before this rewind. is this is this is before we went before yeah okay. this is like well so no, no, like, no 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 like... this is this is happening around about the time rewind was started to do things but no but it would have been on that cd yeah it would have been before because i remember people were sort of talking about yeah there's this guy's got this garage thing going on this is artful dodger thing sort of happening in the garage scene but i remember walking into columbia like walking in and seeing this marble floor, man, looking up and seeing like Destiny's Child plaques, and there was Will Smith at the time when he was having this huge, like all the Men in Black stuff he was doing. Yeah, Mariah Carey, and I was thinking, this is the spot. And I was going there to have a meeting about possibly being signed. And then I'd go to see Wildstar and, and Colin Lester, who was the guy who came down to Southampton and to and was looking to sign me at the time, who's now been my manager for like seventeen years. Which is how the crazy how that story unfolded. But walking into his office, and I was like. Man, is this really? Is this what? Is this what real company is like really about? I mean, it wasn't bad. It was just like it just looked like an office, like yeah. that someone put together, and it had like little. You were going into like a, a kind of recruitment at Reeds or something. Some, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess that was <laughs> that kind of look. Yeah, well, you know, it's sort of like little little dividers between yeah, the rooms yeah. that sort of been put up real quick, and there's a little boardroom, and and I was like, now I was thinking, okay, but the weirdest thing is that looking back over those seventeen years is that it was the best decision I ever made. Because even though Sony, they kind of wanted to do a development deal at the time, and it was they weren't quite sure, and they thought, oh, well, maybe he's only got one tune that's walking away, and that was cool. He was the only person that said to me, you know what, I've got, we can do an album. Yeah. We'll, do it, we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll do a single deal on the table. These are the guys are just talking about, like, they're not even sure if they're going to put a single on the table. But you come back with a couple of songs, there's an album there for you. And he stood by his word because when I came back and I said, "Oh, I've just written the song called Fill Me In," and, and he's like, "Oh, okay, cool, I see now." Oh, and then, yeah, and I, there's this tune I just done with it called Seven Days. I didn't want to check this one out, and he's like, "Okay, okay, <laughs> right." That kind of vibe, yeah. He's like shoving a pen in your. He's hand. just like, you know what? We talked about the album. Let's let's make that happen a little quicker. I was going on the holiday, but let's do maybe do it before the holiday. <laughs> and then it all panned out. So it's just like it's been it's been a mad one. Like coming now back in the Sony building. Yeah, but you so the, that first when you first were coming into buildings like this you you were like 17 18 yeah i was living a dream man you come from a council estate like in southampton just thinking man coming up to london is is a, is like a day out do you know what i mean you think oh but to go park up and you're going in seeing the crazy thing is like i saw like darkest when like before the sort of island sort of like days and being like him being top boy there i was going into columbia and bmg and it was just mad to think that I remember Puffy. Oh, that one I thought, only thought about the other day, right? I had a phone call to my manager at the time, um, and it came through, and, and he was I was at his house, and he said, "Oh yeah, Craig, um, Puff Daddy's on the on the on the on the phone." And I was like, "This is sort of a joke here." Because <laughs> he's a bit of a joker at the best of times anyway. In terms, okay. he loved to wind me up with stuff. Yeah, he gave me the phone, and I know Puffy's voice. I mean, you know certain voices. Yeah, when I heard it. I was like, are you actually for real? I mean, this is someone I've grown up on, Bad Boy Entertainment, Notorious B.I.G., 112, Faith, all these artists. Mm. And Puffy's on the phone saying, listen, um, 
bro, we we're loving the vibe, love the, the music that you got going on. We'll, we'll send, I'll send my jet over to come pick you up, bring you over. You can come and check out how the bad boy family is over here. And I was like, what <laughs> is going on here? What At what point's this? Is it, what what's what's how's he found out about you at this point? Is this like this is when so at this point now you've blown up at this point. I think we got to the point where filming Seven Days had been released. Okay, we were on the cusp about to release Born to Do It, but cool. the prediction everyone was saying, oh, it's looking like it's going to be a number one album. Do you know what I mean? It's all mm. kicking off. So he was like on the phone. So he's real, on it. Real quick. Puffy knows something. Man, he knows something's up. Imagine that one minute you're watching like Top of the Pops. Just chilling, just relaxing back, gonna have your tea, just like nice, just have a little food. And you got Puffy on the phone talking about jets coming over to see the bad boy family. You're thinking, is this one big joke that's going on here? Madness, but yeah, it was crazy. Did you go and see him? Did Do you know happen? what? It never ended up, I never ended up going with, with Puffy in the end. It's like Atlantic were really strong at the time and Craig Kalman who was like there was like, we gotta make this happen. Okay. And it felt like the right place yeah, yeah, to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. But Have you met Puffy since? I met him a couple of times, Have you? Like, but only but it was back then. It was around those sort of times. And did he live up to like your childhood idea of what? Yeah. Was he? Pu he was still puffy then. He it was puffy. I mean, okay. then he went to Diddy, and then more recently, Love, and a few different yeah. things that done. But like, it's puffy, man. Like it's just when you look at someone who, the music I was listening to, like I said, I listened to Notorious B.I.G., and definitely his involvement of leaning, uh, Notorious B.I.G. into songs like one more chance or juicy mm. or big papa where there were more r b yeah and then you think then mary j blige was involved and then you think of 112 and then you think of faith evans and you just think of lil kim and you just think of the 90s r b hip-hop bad boy that bad boy was running the show and you're there and i'm there speaking to him thinking and then what he's gone on to do as a career i, I just got to rate him he's just somehow always kept himself current mm. and at the same time with the sean john label like and yeah, they're yeah. saying in Forbes he's like one of the like he's the amount he's accumulated money wise well so I'm just like gee what a guy yeah yeah he knows what he's doing yeah, he, yeah, he, he knows a few things <laughs> he knows a man who knows a man who, who can put together a few things he can hook, he can hook things up <laughs> yeah of course I think he can hook things up of course so are you back here are you living back here now are you yeah, yeah I'm back 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 from Miami yeah I still my home's there but like for me I had to let there was a real I had to let go like about mm. two years ago of that kind of thinking that it was living in Miami and that living a dream and all that stuff. And don't get me wrong, it was, I fulfilled a huge part of what I wanted to do in terms of sports car and the, and the, and the, the apartment oh, and like. everything. I was just like, wow, someone was off, man. I just felt like it was like, this is all not, this is not the place to be. It was very transient as well. It was like people coming in and out and out for holidays and the music scene was sort of very heavily EDM or heavy hip hop, like real, just, just trap. It wasn't really any sort of in between. Okay. And, and then as soon as I moved back, man, it was almost like everything aligned. You know what I mean? You walked into the, that radio station with Mr. Jam and Corrupt FM and something connected. You know what, what I mean? What were you missing when, when you were there, mm. e even when you, even maybe when you first moved, moved out there, cause you were there for like eight or nine years, right? It was uh, about four, four or five years. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, were there moments like, what was the thing that you're thinking? I miss this from back home. Is it pubs? <clears throat> For me, it would be pubs, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Because I like the states, but they don't do nowhere does like a British pub. Do you know what I mean? No, like, it's, it's, it's culturally it's so far removed. It's yeah. Like I couldn't, you know, we just want to talk. Like, that's what we were talking about Reebok classics, mm. um, or just I'd like frames of references. Just yeah, generally, or yeah. talk about garage music. Forget that. That's that's not even gonna. We might as well not have a conversation. I was gonna, I was like, gonna ask. Was like, was there's like, certain things you just couldn't have, and and I felt like when you can't sort of reminisce about certain things, and also more importantly, that my friends and family were so far away. It was just like I, you you get friends there. You do a different kind of sort of friends that and some would be closer than others some would be like there because they wanted to go party with you and that's kind of the, their remit and there's mm -hmm. other people who would be like you wouldn't call them up if you got stuck on the the motorway out there they'd just be like oh the answer machine sort of keeps kicking in all the time but when you're throwing a house party oh they're real quick to be like okay. oh yeah yeah, yeah I'm, I'm on my guy. way over man what time should i be there it's one of those ones yeah so you could i knew how to differentiate between what was going on and there was a few that were just were solid um but being, it was just I needed to be back in the mix. This, if it's the food, is it food? If it's the what's on TV? Like it's like basic things that yeah. I just felt like I needed. And as soon as I did, it was like ah, oh, 
right, we're back in that zone. And then I started to meet, sync up with the right people. Yeah. All these like young up and coming sort of producers and stuff who would talk to me about rewind the film in and be really like passionate and flat. I'd be flattered by what they're saying. Like, oh man, back in the day, you were so amazing, man. And, and it would be you were all the time. It'd be like, yeah, it was you. I loved it when you used to. And I'm thinking, I'm still standing I'm here. I'm still here. here. Yeah. So I used that opportunity to sort of walk into the booth and literally transform into this 15, 16 year old kid again and just give everything on the mic, hoping that they might press the talk back button and see what they say. And I'd wait, because I was ad-libbing my life away. Yeah, I was like giving everything, anything I could, like, man. And then I'd hear the button press, and I'd hear this, ooh, <laughs> you still got it, bruv, you still got it, ooh. That for me was enough to slowly sort of let that candle burn into sort of this roaring flame. And yeah, then yeah. I just continued and it started to unfold for me. Yeah, and people like now, like, thing is about Born to Do It, mm and UK mm. Garage and like you were saying about like how like back here you can reminisce with people about it and people hold it so because I'm, I'm barely a year younger than you and Wicked. I grew up in South End yeah and it was all garage yeah like it it is my form formulative years Wicked, you know like Wicked. the first time I was clubbing the first time I went into a club and first time I got drunk mm -hmm. first time I embarrassed myself in front of women of course was to your music, you know, so it was to like there I was a, there was a time when like I mean you could have been the mayor of South End back then. <laughs> I don't know if you ever did you ever do a PA in South End? Do you know what? I would have? You must. Have, I right? must. I, but I, must, I, may, I, must, may, I must have come through because I was doing uh, because at that time I was doing it wasn't just a London PA. I was doing sort of I was doing it all over the gap. Mm. I remember like my mate would pick me up in his yellow F Ford Fiesta. We play a little Rosie Gaines closer than close on the way up there, getting ourselves gas before we go come up, and then literally loud Moschino outfit. Reebok classics on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know that Moschino outfit that's so loud that there's no real need to have the tag still on it, just no, with the yeah, Moschino, yeah. just to reinforce again that it's Moschino those days. Go up there, singing my heart out to what you're gonna do was the first tune. And then when it got to Rewind, Rewind was funny because that song when I performed it live, it was like, at first people didn't really know what to do. So like, they'd be cool with the verses because it was like, it was on the two-step flex, it was cool. As soon as it went to the bass line this, in the chorus, and it was sort of half time. People were like, um, am, I, am, I, I'm not, am I supposed to like, is this a slow jam now? Or am I supposed to just bob my head? Or, And I love it because that's all, it, it put it into its own lane. I mean, you'd remember at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was just like, nah, trust me, I, you're going to learn about this bass line. And like at some point, it's going to hit you like it did when I was back in my home and in my flat playing it, rinsing it through my big sub speaker in my, in my bedroom. My whole my whole like block of flats knew about Rewind very early on. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been to some pretty tasty is what we'd call them back tasty, then. Tasty, tasty. Clubs. Boy. Because we had like, um, who came through? We had like Oxide and Neutrino. Oh, them days, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so they came and played a club called Bound Comedian. Reload, rough Bound club, for, yeah, yeah. really rough. But is there anywhere that stands out of like, I remember a <clears throat> night in Cheltenham or- Do you know what, actually, from around your manor, uh, at Coco. So at this time it was Camden Palace. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember going there. That place was vibey. The bass line was like, the, the, the system they had in there still, we did there recently. And man, that sub will take you. So when you, you will take off with it and on stage, you are f almost like floating on that stage. I could feel it when I was there this time around. I had to turn it down. It was almost <laughs> like making my whole situation, the whole deck thing jump. It was like mad. And the Coliseum, um, which was, sort of South London, that was okay. wicked as well, because right. that was very much where I could, I've got sort of vague kind of memory, but going up there and doing Rewind and 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 obviously, uh, actually film me in, like the early film me in, not like the one that everyone sort of, there was parts of it that I did in a little, it wasn't like a dub play thing I was doing, and people were like, who would know about that? But yeah, it was sick days. So, so TS5, in a, in a sense, is for, for anyone listening who might not know what, kind it, is of know what it is That's just cool. yet, it's kind of like that old school thing of like, it's you on the mic, you're mm. DJing as well. Yeah. And uh, you're performing your tracks, but you also like chuck out just some big hits as well. Yeah. I wasn't at Glastonbury this year. Right. But I watched Glastonbury. No, like, when I'm at Glastonbury, I'm always having a good time. When I'm not at Glastonbury, I'm always quite thankful I'm not there. Right. But this year. It's standard. But, yeah. That, yeah that that's that's, that, yeah, that's it. But this year, for the first time, I watched all of Glastonbury from my sofa. Wicked. And there are a few mo I, and it's the one time I think I really wish I was at Glastonbury. Yeah. And one big moment was your set there. Oh, thanks. There man. was there was like a few sets 
there was also like I watched the Katy Perry set and mm. I thought that looks like fun yeah. that looks like that's what Glastonbury should be about a bit right. of everything you know yeah. like not just like dreary bands yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. Um, but you're you, pl- you did the Pyramid stage this year is yeah, that the no. first time you've been uh, to <coughs> Glastonbury no I'd done the year before I played on the Sonic stage okay Silver Haze but that was the first time I mean even Born to Do It days mm. at the peak of the album we never did Glastonbury I think it was different time it wasn't yeah it was well back then it was just and, bands yeah, right yeah, exactly yeah. and now they've kind of loosened up a bit since jay-z i think yeah, yeah like it's kind of opened this floodgates to like be kind of a bit more inclusive yeah. and better I yeah think. you got stormzy who was who was performing on one of the other stages exactly. as well yeah, yeah, and it's, yeah, i yeah. mean it's totally different flex there yeah, yeah yeah so um the set that you did at glastonbury you kind of did half with the band mm. they did half of uh ts5 yeah and ts5 you so you started this in your home in miami is yeah. that right yeah T- ts5 was um was the name of the apartment so there was like there was ts1 two three four five okay and they i think they would call them tower suites right for whatever reason and then people would like when I, they were coming over for the house party they'd be like oh yeah we're coming ts5 tonight and i just ran with it it was just like you know what because people like ask me the question now like oh so amazing idea and how did you uh, how did you come up with the idea and what does it all mean and i was just like it just means this is the location if you don't know where to go TS5 is the location for tonight and people were texting it out um, and it, it took its own because it was a very exclusive sort of little party that I was throwing in my apartment so it was just for you and some mates it was just literally for 10 of my mates at first who were just going to come around have a couple shots play a few tunes and life is good but I love how things align like when you pull out from the puzzle it's incredible how the story sort of unfolded where them messing around with my playlist where one minute we're playing like some hip hop, I don't know, some Biggie, Juicy, and it was all cool, and it was a nice time, and it would literally flip to Macarena uh, or some kind of mad. I'd just be like, guys, how does this work? And I'm and I've had a couple of shots right now, so I shouldn't even really be able to realize what's going on here. But I can hear that, and that's just like it's almost like getting that adrenaline rush where you become really sober real quick. You're like, this duck, this can't happen. So I tried to rein it back in. So you're like, guys, you. Uh, yeah, it's like you the pour the drinks and you, you calm yourself down and I'll take this little part of the music back yeah. which then led to me getting a little DJ set up which then they were like okay if you want to be Mr. DJ now playing the tunes you need to grab a little mic I'm at like, this okay, point cool. you should be in like this is my house yeah I mean there was part where I did have to tell people a few little things about themselves but they'd be like yeah we'll have another shot and then all of a sudden it all got blurry okay, yeah? Right, yeah. next thing you got got mic next thing you know they're more people were sort of starting to come through because we're inviting some friends and stuff and I was cool with it because I was like I've got this beautiful pad but you've got to open it up at some point and enjoy it can't just be like everything looking all perfect and cushions all looking so I was like you know what whatever and I got an amazing housekeeper who's there and she'd always somehow we'd leave and then come back after going to a club and it did look like the party never happened and it built to like we were getting to nearly 100 people in my house I mean there's a lot of people when you think about it yeah yeah Jesus and, but I, the pe- my friends there they knew that they had to respect that it was my home so if you're going to invite some people they need to respect that it's my home not come in and just mash up the whole place yeah and thankfully they did and and what progressed in the ts5 set was people would say, say oh can you perform one of your tunes and i was like well that's not gonna be playing his own tunes in his own house that's not the that's one not i'm the gonna one. play other people's things and then all of a sudden like a very pretty girl comes and says oh you need to maybe this is over seven days and he's like oh let me just do a little <laughs> verse for you then if you uh, let me just do a little verse for that which then sort of progressed to the whole song and then but it's crazy when i think about it because that was the first time where i'd started to add a couple of my tunes in then i started to add a couple of my new bits that i was working on just to kind of test it fast forward then two years or two three years even i then had my first show at um in oslo in shapes and that was the real test to see if the house party in Miami would translate into this hipster area. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Hackney. And seeing the crowd go off, at the time, I didn't have any new music. I mean, mm. when the bass on drops was just starting to, I think I had early versions of it, I played like Mario, Let Me Love You. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I saw, the, I saw the lighter crew in there and the gun thing came up and I was thinking, for Mario, let me love you. I, should, this, it was, I, I felt confident by it, but other people were like, you can't do that. A bottle's going to come flying at you, right? I was like, but this is a tune. Yeah. And I knew at that point something could happen. Yeah. And then it moved on to, we did Shapes um, right. yeah, yeah. and kept it there and it moved on. And then it got to, obviously, to Coco and, and then we did Brixton Academy more recently. So it's been a progression to see that house party can work. It's wicked. And crowd-wise... Is it people of our age? Is it like people who remember those those tracks? The maddest thing is both. There were people who came. There were definitely people who've been the first time rounds with me were there, for sure. And that and that love that I've had, 
because I know I could tell that people were just like, oh, thank you you actually play the tune like most DJs just want to play the latest songs all the time but you actually went to a throwback tune that we all loved and nobody really wants to play anymore. but then when it started to progress to the point where I added new songs in so when the bass line drops then it happened and then there was the nothing like this with, with Blonde and then we're moving up to Ain't Giving Up with Cigar like all of a sudden I'm starting to see a younger crowd starting to come to the shows so by the time we did Brixton Academy I literally was seeing like 14, 15 year old kids with the 25 year olds with the people who our age and, and and then it went to the arena tour well i saw everything going on i mm. saw people who've been like from the start i saw like but the the mums and dads of the i was thinking this is a madness that i didn't expect this this time around i was like maybe the people who were with me they'll get this but to see a new generation literally discovering me saying oh have you heard of this new kid called craig david loving that <laughs> i'll be that new kid for as long as you want that's all good with me like in Miami, yeah. are people, would people be into like the UK garage stuff? What would you be playing like before you, before, you know, mm. the pretty girl comes up and says, hey, you're going to do filming in? Like, would you? Um, they were, they, they learned real quick how to like the UK garage stuff. But they really? Were, yeah, because it was a bit like, you're going to get some UK garage in my house, right? So this is sort of, when you pass that door, you know you're entering into a, my musical world. Yeah. Um, and I think that was what the best part of TS5 is that I didn't really sort of, allow it to conform to being a, a sort of a miami based party because I, I used to go to a few house parties and see it'd be very heavy edm led and then you go to a club and it was very kind of like edm which is totally cool but i was like no you're gonna hear some garage tunes and you're gonna hear me spitting a few bars over a garage tune and be like oh that's kind of fast not really sure. and their reference point maybe would be twister or bone thugs and harmony that were doing those kind of things and then I'd drop a couple of tunes that, that like, of the latest tunes there that they'd be like, oh, okay, you went to that big hip hop tune that I wouldn't have necessarily played back in the UK. Mm. Um, but it, the way it's played out has turned into something that actually when I was in Southampton and I was DJing on the South Coast before Born to Do It, I was using my Technics 1210s and vinyl doing the same thing that what TS5 is. I mean, that's the maddest thing. It's like I... You've come full circle. Yeah, I didn't it. incorporate it because it... I, using vinyl was too long to set up to like to have the headphones on and get the mix right i mean technology's moved forward where you can have sync buttons and serato and you can so my thing is on the go now i'm so fast i'm like i can mix in two tunes like there's so many bedroom djs who can do that so that's fine but to mix it and then quickly into an instrumental jump out of the booth get on the mic let me do a freestyle boom right back round let's go into another tune that for me is ts5 it's not let me have a couple shots turn around have a chat with my mate and then mix the next tune i ain't got time that's not my that's my, not your thing yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah the, you learn you, you hone your craft from vinyl man when it starts to jump and you're there and the crowd's looking at you and you're like right fight or flight so one hand is trying to find another bit of vinyl because obviously this one's warped the other hand is on the mic freestyling some madness crowd are like oh it's the vibe me sweating like i'm in a sauna thinking <laughs> I gotta somehow get this tune back in without mashing up the whole situation, and then you pull it off, and then after someone comes to you, says, "Man, that was sick! Well, you did that acapella thing, and then you went into it, and then, bro, why are you sweating? <laughs> sweating? If only you knew. That's kind of why TS5 for me now is like, it, it, I'm so in my zone, and it's a bit of a breeze because I'm like, I, I've done the hard work on yeah, vinyl, yeah, man. Yeah. I yeah. can do this all day long. You, you, yeah, earn your chops, yeah, in it. You know the job. Have you um, did you stick around at Glastonbury afterwards? Did you make we, a make a weekend of it? We did another um, show, like a little discreet show. I got, I can't remember the name of the. Oh man, can you remember? Can you remember the name of the place that I played in? I did a separate show in uh, okay. Glastonbury. We did a little low key one after. Is it the that look at me is already telling me you have no yeah. idea what we're even talking about. <laughs> what, after the main set? Yeah, after the main set, I did another one. Alex went on, but all good. We Dave, did. A, Dave, Dave doesn't know what Glastonbury is. It's your first. <laughs> Don't worry, man. I'll introduce you to it. It's, it's like a festival. People can walk around. They, there's a couple of acts they perform. It's, it's wicked. Um, yeah. Do you know what? We did a small TS5 one. Okay. Um, and I just let loose with tunes. It was. A, I almost took it to a different place. But I just. It was. I did a dr jungle set part of it. It was like a good twenty minutes of jungle. My favorite tunes from that era. Then went into some of the R&B. Then gave him some of the some of the tunes that I knew. But yeah, and I I I done the. Well, in boots and had a look around, get in the mix the year before when I did the Silver Haze. Okay, right. How did area. you find that? It was wicked, man. It was low key. Because it was low key. I just did my thing. And then it got a little bit on top when loads of people started to like 
recognised. And I was cool with it. I'll, I'll do selfies all day long. It's like, it's cool. But then someone's saying, well, you can, yeah, selfie your, the whole day up, but there's a stage up there that's calling your name. If you don't get on it soon, then that's the end of that. And I was like, okay, cool. Or maybe I do have to move through this. But I just love that you didn't have to go to a, a stage and see an act play. You probably know better mm. than, than me actually having gone to Glastonbury yeah. a few times. That you can go, there's an arts and crafts fair over there and there's some massage thing going over there and there's someone's having a house party, a rave in their tent. And then you just find things that yeah, you didn't yeah, even know. Yeah. And I think that's what makes that place yeah, exciting. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Two more things. Mm. One, you're still a very young man. Oh. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you're still. Like, uh, well, really? well, you're, 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 I've always got a year on you. I, like, yeah, I feel old. Do you feel how are you? How are you enjoying your thirties? I feel a bit like Benjamin Button. Yeah, right. It feels like now I can't control the outside, so I don't know what's <laughs> going on there. Yeah, that's that's another story. But in terms of how I feel inside, I feel like the kid again. Yeah. Who who started doing all this? Because I think the wisdom of seventeen years so far has told me. And the reason why I called the album The Time Is Now is just enjoy this journey. Because I had the moment of going to Miami and fulfill the dream and the sun, the car, sports life, all the uh, sports cars and all that stuff. But I needed to be back where it all started again. And I was very happy to be in a dungy, uh, low-lit studio with some 18-year-old kid who's going to show me about, oh, yeah, back-in-the-day stuff, and then having to be in the studio and make new tunes. That I wanted more than being the glitzy life yeah so i think that what i've realized is that actually once you're present and you're living in the moment you start to notice that you can still have dreams and aspirations and desires but they're not oh it's going to be better when i get that it's going to be better when i because all the things that you got when you said it's going to be better you know what i mean you got those you got the, the trainers you wanted oh man you got them they're on your feet how's it feel man it feels good but why are you already talking about some next mm. ones and now the ones you got on your feet already got dashed in the back of the cupboard life you'll keep doing that and there's a point we have to stop and be like ah oh, i get it it's actually about enjoying the journey along the way i did that with an england goalkeeper top really the, it was like the um old school or new? old school really old peter the shilton, green, green, peter peter shilton. shilton. Peter wow shilton, yeah the, the yellow gloves remember those yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Gloves, those, right? yeah the yellow one and oh, in, i know that one in my football team a kid had it a guy called chris had it I was like, I want that shirt more than anything in the world. And mm. I just wanted it. And I got yeah. it for like Christmas or my birthday one yeah. year. As soon as I put it on, it was dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Because it's the umbro one, one, yeah? The umbro, yeah, yeah, the umbro yeah, 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 with yeah. the one on the back. Yeah, yeah, With yeah. the umbro and the, and the base of the yeah, one. I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, I'd, I'd want it, I'd want, now that I'm talking about it, I want it back again now because I've not got it. Oh, yeah, but you're, like, you're, you're going to have a little look. And it's, yeah. and it's probably leading it now, talking about all this resurgence stuff, a cost of fortune. Yeah, it probably would, yeah. But you're right. It's not, it's that thing of you cut it's almost I don't know, looking for the same thing but grander scale you look for the house you find the house and then all of a sudden like someone says no no you can't have that yeah it's just it's, someone's already put an offer in all of a sudden you want it badder than you, you ever had anything. it you get it and then you're just oh, yeah did i do it because i was a bit hyped or because it's not quite and i think you, there are a few of those experiences along the way you start to ease yourself back and realize that it is the enjoyment and the thrill of wanting it but you don't necessarily need to have it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because once you have it, it isn't that that isn't the thing. The defining part of it isn't that. It's this the it's the journey of it and free free with it at the same time. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, sure. You get it. That's 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 wicked. Midnight Chats is a loud and quiet podcast. Music courtesy of Gold Panda. Search Midnight Chats on iTunes for more episodes and to subscribe. For more information, visit loudandquiet.com.